in your book on the future prospects for humanity, you imagine a time machine that allows you to send a tweet length message to scientists in the past, <laughs> like to Newton. Yes. Um, what tweet would you send? That's an interesting thought experiment. What message would you send to Newton about what we know today? Well, I think he'd love to know that there were planets around other stars. Um, he'd he'd yes. like to know that... Uh, that would really blow yeah, his mind. He'd right? like to know that everything was made of atoms. Uh, he'd like to know that if he looked a bit more carefully through his prisms um, uh, and uh, looked at light not just from the sun but from, from some flames, he might get the idea that... Uh, Different substances emitted light of different different colors, and he might have uh, been twigged to discover some things that had to wait two or three hundred years. Could have given him those clues, I think. It's kind of it's fascinating to think to look back at how little he understood. People at that time understood about our world. Mm -hmm. Yes, and well, how and, much uh, we've and certainly about the cosmos, because of course, cosmos, um, yes. well, if we think about astronomy, um, then until about 1850, um, uh, astronomy was a matter of um, um, uh, the positions of how the stars and the planets moved around, etc. Of course, that goes back a long way, but Newton understood why the planets moved around in ellipses, but uh, he didn't understand. Um, why the solar system was all in a plane, what we call the ecliptic, and uh, he didn't understand it, and no one did till the mid-19th century, what the stars are made of. I mean, they were thought to be made of some fifth essence, not earth, earth, and water like everything else, you know. Um, and it was only after 1850 when um, people did use uh, prisms more precisely to get to get uh, spectra that they realized that the the sun was made of the same stuff as the earth, and indeed the stars were. And uh, it wasn't until um, 1930 that people knew about nuclear energy and knew what kept the sun shining for, for so long. So it was quite late that some of these key ideas came in, you know, which would have completely transformed Newton's views and, of course, the uh, entire scale of the, solar, of the ga galaxy and, and the rest of the universe. Just so imagine which came later. what he would have thought about the Big Bang, or even just general relativity. Absolutely, just yeah, gravity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. him and Einstein talking for for a couple yeah, of yeah. weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would he be able to make sense of space time and the curvature of space time? And well, I think given a quick course, I mean, he was sort of. Uh, <laughs> if one looks back, he he was really a unique intellect in a way, you know, and. Uh, uh, he said that he thought better than everything, everyone else by thinking on things continually and thinking very deep thoughts. And um, so he, he was a utterly remarkable intellect, obviously. But of course, scientists aren't all like that. I think it's very, one thing that interests me, having spent a life among scientists, is what a variety of uh, mindsets and mental styles they have. Yes. Um, and, um, um, well, just to contrast Newton and Darwin, um, Darwin uh, uh, said, uh, uh, and he's probably correct, that he that, that he thought he just had a um, as, as much sort of a common sense and reasoning power as the average lawyer, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and and that's probably true because his his ability was to sort of uh, collect data and think through things deeply. Um, that's a quite different kind of thinking from what was involved in a, in Newton or someone doing abstract mathematics. I think in the 20th century, the coolest, well, there's the theory, but from an astronomy perspective, black holes is one of the most fascinating entities to have been through theory and through experiment to have emerged mm. from. No, obviously, I agree. Science. It's an amazing story that, uh, um, uh, well, of course, what's interesting is Einstein's reaction because. Of course, although, as you know, we now accept this is one of the most remarkable predictions of Einstein's theory, uh, he never took it seriously, even believed it. Yeah. Um, although it was a consequence of uh, a solution of his equations, which someone discovered just a year after his theory, Schwarzschild. Um, but he, he never took it seriously, and others did. Um, but then, of course, um, uh, well, this is something that I've been involved in actually finding evidence for black holes, and that's come in the last 50 years. And um, uh, so now there's pretty compelling evidence that they exist. Um, 
as the remnants of stars or big ones in the centers of galaxies. And we, un we understand uh, what's, the, what's going on. We have ideas vaguely on how, how they form. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, gravitational waves have been detected. And that's an amazing piece of technology. LIGO is one of the most incredible engineering efforts of yes, all time. And that's an example where the engineers deserve the most of the credit because the precision is, it, well, as they said, yeah. it's like um, measuring the thickness of a hair at the distance of Alpha Centauri. Yeah, it's incredible. 10 to the minus 21.